Alright everyone and welcome back to another video, the F123 driver career mode with Alfa Romeo, episode number 30 today for the Portuguese Grand Prix of season 2. If you missed the previous episode at um, Brazil, I recommend you go and check that one out, la uploaded last week. And of course, subscribe to the channel, see plenty more F123 driving crew mode videos. Um, yeah, good for another good result, fifth place in Portugal. Um, and now it's just about, obviously we had that R&D, major R&D reset announced um, as well. You know, we're trying to make this car, you can see Rebel are just miles in front of everyone else. Haas is still there, second fastest on the engine really. Um, we're still bossing it, but oh, dear, good. So we're going to have full wet qualifying and a dry race. So, yeah, that's not great. Ferrari have brought one upgrade. We've got one upgrade. I think it was a weight redistribution. The Sashi's not getting reset for next season. So um, obviously going to get keep that upgrade. Unlike, you know, but obviously the full focus is now on, you know, keeping as many parts as possible with, well, what what is two races to go? Well, we've got three races to go, but I mean... Yeah, we'll have to wait to see what we can do, but time for qualifying. It is very wet out there, ladies and gentlemen. Um, just like the weather we've had across the south coast of England, and we're probably going to later this week um, as well. But yeah, start the session was on full wets, however. There is light at the end of the tunnel because it was not full wet at the end of the session. Um, it was intermediates. Many laps of full wets has put me P6 um, as well. Piastri and Bottas right behind, right behind Leclerc. He needs to do better, um, but we'll be falling down the field. We're now on to our final line. That bit wide there. We need to do better than that through that corner. Um, you know, I have been bre breaking early. You've seen that from the full wet, you know, on the full wet bit of thing. I was breaking early there at this and that this corner as well. Obviously, under intermediates, I can break a bit later, but I still, it's still not um, full on. You know, where you can rock up with brake assist and just not brake if you're using brake assist. So, 1.2 seconds up on the previous best time. So now go up to that corner, watch the back end of that corner because it's always. Sliding McG out of it as we come through this roller coaster in the middle section. I mean, it's not actually, it's not actually t to be fair, this track's not actually too bad in the wet. I mean, it, it, I imagine if it was really poor, if it was worse than what we had, then there yeah, we set a purple middle sector. Don't read too much into that, um, to be honest. Um, the, you know, that's where this car is at, probably at, and you know, with the tyres we've got, I think Russell set also behind us. Um, so, yeah, we're three seconds off on our previous best time. I don't think this is going to be pole. Where will this be, though? Can it be the top ten? No, it can't. It's P11. But it will be a top ten start, because Sergio Perez has a five-second, five-place grid penalty for illegal blocking, so... Yeah, but I mean, the Claire starts on pole, so it's exactly the comeback he needs to fend off a Stappen in the Drivers' World Championship. So, well, we'll have to wait and see what we can do. What will be 10th place on the grid? It's time for the race, time for the Portuguese Grand Prix. The Formula One circus has made its way to the southern coast of Portugal this week and is preparing for what I expect to be a terrific race here in Portimao. So Portimao features 15 turns over the course of its 2.9 mile length. Nine are right-handers, while six are to the left. This is a track with a lot of uphill action, which only accentuates the importance of getting those exits right, especially at turn four, where a good line can present opportunities to pass on the way into turn five. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. It's Carlos Sainz in pole position edging out Max Verstappen, who will start from P2. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Norris, Joe, Russell, Sonoda, Gasly, Ocon, Phoenix, Leclerc, 
Fernando Alonso, Bottas, Perez, Oscar Piastri, De Vries, Albon, Magnussen, Stroll, Sargent, Nico Hulkenberg rounds off the grid. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head down trackside for today's race. And joining me again for the race today, Natalie Pinker. Joined once again by former Formula One driver, Anthony Davidson. And they've had a lot of on-track incidents recently. That could leave them low on confidence. It's not an ideal situation by any means. When you get into a bad run like that, there's always the risk of frustration creeping in, which can cause more mistakes and locks you into this vicious cycle. Hopefully today they can get through turn one cleanly and stay calm. After the points finished last race, let's aim to keep that momentum going. So Leclerc has taken pity on Perez and has got a grid penalty as well. I mean, you know, you're fighting for the Drivers' World Championship. Only Ferrari can bottle it from here. Um, you know, Verstappen really was nowhere. Race strategy is a bit interesting because everyone's starting the soft, so I mean, we might as well start on the mediums. Let's go um, to five red lights then. For the Portuguese Grand Prix, I've never done a 50% race round here by the way, and away we go. Better start than Ocon and Sonoda, Yuki not having the best start, um, although he's going to come back side by side going into turn one, I'm going to take the long way around the Haas, I show you Guan Yu has also had a poor start, um, and we're up another position there, uh, so we're, we're trying to snake around the back of George Russell, but unable to do that, up to P6 that is, as Leclerc, not having the best of starts there. Perez ran his outside there. There was contact there, I think, between Perez, um, Sonoda and Gasly, which is um, the two former teammates of caught Alfa Tari drivers just blocking the way ahead. But for the front, Carlos Sainz leads the way. Leclerc will be hoping his teammate can just run away. Although Leclerc, Sainz has not been as helpful as we have um, for him, um, you know. Now, it's about that time at lap 3 for the DRS games to begin. Yes, this is where we get the DRS on the car in front and then immediately embarrass them, bypass them on the straight. Um, this week's target is Zhou Guan Yu. We know how good that has in the straight line you saw earlier on the R&D chart. They are the second fastest engine after Red Bull. Um, we do have to use a bit, we're almost down the end of the straight before we actually get to undertake it, but we have the apex. Way able to get re overtake show only just though. So I'm thinking maybe we should defend. And Joe actually gets caught out that he gets overtaken by Yuki Sonoda. So Sonoda taking advantage of Joe, who's lost two positions down that straight. Gasly up next um, for the man in the Haskar um, as well. But this is promising. I think we can just about get away with four turns. But I made a mistake there on that apex. And that hairpin is not um, my friend, and you know that you know we have to let Sonoda pass. I think we can get away with if we've got a four tenth advantage um, as well over the car behind. It depends, obviously, on who's behind you. To be honest, I mean, if it's a Red Bull, you're going to need at least ten seconds, probably, with their DRS advantage. Is that Sonoda? Sorry, not Sonoda. Joe, excuse me, and he has had a Spinala in the house um, and that well I mean he's reversing out the way Perez and Leclerc have both been caught up in that but it's not going to matter for them because first the safety car got called out and then it's a red flag so yes red flag deployed even though nobody crashed my red flags it's the first red flag we've had in a while in this career mode um, yeah now mark has recommended a two stop from here sorry a two stop overall one stop from here on in on a sauce i think we can get go all the way on the hard tires i think that's going to be the better strategy for me we don't i don't think i have the pace around here to make the two stop make the two stop work compared to the one stop so yeah um, yeah, we're not going to see the pit lane today, but the looks of it, everyone else on Haas as well. Five red lights are out, and away we go once again. And it's a poor start from Russell and Gasly as well. So Noda's had a great, just as good a start as I had. He's round the outside. Poor start there for both 
uh, Gasly and Russell there. They've lost, both lost two positions. And we're just holding back. So now I'm going to go at the top of the hill. And he's going to go through here. But DRS is enabled. So, you know, it's about, at this point, just um, biding our time. Can we... I think we can keep with Sonoda. Um, yeah. His pace seems to be through the middle sector. Obviously, Aston Martin probably a bit more downforce compared to the Alfa Romeo. And this setup especially, which has a lot of low wings on as well. But we're going to obviously not even... We haven't even got DRS, excuse me. DRS has enabled this lap, assuming lap 11. Uh, but we don't need it because we're able to use the straight line speed that we've got with the setup and need a bit of ERS and up back up to P4 um, as well. Um, but interesting note, Sykes is on the soft. He has to stop again, as does uh, his teammate Charles Leclerc, which is a bit surprising. Uh, Sykes is trying to get past Norris, who overtook him on the start, but Sykes will get in front of Norris eventually. He didn't get in front there. As Sonoda has another go down the inside, we need to be on the outside there to make that work. Meanwhile, a long, long way behind, we're watching Lance Stroll, um, and just like in real life, he's not having the greatest car, not the greatest luck, and he is out of the race with an engine failure as well. But up at the front, Max Verstappen, I mean, it's turning into real life, isn't it? He's on the mediums. Red Bull, but him and Perez, because Perez is doing the same strategy, the only two on the medium tyres going to the end of the Grand Prix. That's how good Red Bull's tyre wear is. You know, compare that to Ferrari, who are both two stopping as well. I think both Alpha Tauris are also two stopping as well. Um, yeah, we've got Sonoda all over the back of this on lap 16. Um, so there's a bit of a dive there, the hand of frustration comes out um, as well. Um, have a replay, you know, it's not really an overtaking position, he sort of dives it, um, you know, that's where Sperry, Sonoda, excuse me, is strongest in that Aston Martin car, um, but as I'm able to get there again, and we've had a bit of an issue with the, that hairpin, so again, we're just going to let him pass, um, get, get DRS, um, and, you know, just, once we've got DRS, the Aston Martin has definitely got a lot more um, aero and with less depth, straight line speed than we had against the Haas show earlier, but he's still there. We tried to defend against him on lap t as we go on to lap 20, but he takes the inside line. We give him, we do give him a bit of space to make the turn in. Turn in. There was a bit of contact there. Um, didn't want me to make contact there, and again, um, on the outside, and that is Leclerc. He has come in then to fit his medium compound tyres for the end of the race. So, Ferrari, not the, not the red flag, not their friend. I'm hoping that if we ever get promoted, if we do get promoted at the end of this season, you know, they're gonna they're gonna have fixed tyre. Where otherwise, it's gonna be like this um, as well. Sainz though has come out at the back of this train. Um, on the medium compound tyres, and his first victim is our teammate Fernando Alonso. Um, science goes down the inside, and well, with just as you saw with Norris yesterday in Mexico, it's a lot easier when you've got that new rubber. The science is able to blast past, so yeah, science will be doing Orlando Norris and cutting through the field. Um, as well, we are defending from Yuki Sonoda at that point. And you know, the pace isn't on those Haas as he gets past Shogra and you, um, Science. The pace on the Haas to Norris isn't that bad. I'm only losing time when I have to give DRS to Sonoda, really. Maybe one or two tenths, but you know, he's in the Mercedes, so I don't think that's too bad as uh, Science makes more work of them, light work of the McLaren. Um, Sonoda goes past again with DRS on lap 26, but again, we're just going to go around the outside. Again, we're trying to. I'm trying to be squeezed, but give him fair. I mean, you know, a bit of weaving there. I mean, his science got away with it yesterday, so I mean, I can as well. Um, there, and then he just takes the inside line, which you don't want to do. You need to be on the racing line if you're going to make that overtake work or, or pinch them, pinch them drivers. Science is going to have a go at his favourite turner, turn five, round the outside of the Alpine of Esteban Ocon. And he's making moves as well. Science again. Look at that. He's making another overtake. This time on George Russell. Russell really struggling in this race. 
um, as well to do absolutely anything. And then on, it's not on that his next overtake. I think that's on uh, Bottas. Um, isn't able to. He's able to get in front um, of the McLaren um, down the main straight. So Gasly is coming. We jumped to lap 30. Um, Sonoda once again down at the inside there. We're going to keep it on the outside there. Um, as well as going to side by side back up the hill. Um, Sonoda thinks better of it. Uh, Gasly has caught up to. Sorry, Sainz has caught up to Gasly, excuse me. So, yeah, we are going to let the Sonoda go through. Again, if you are going to give DRS, go right that corner. It is the, the, what I can advantage. As I say, you don't really want to do it if you're trying to catch the car in front. But if there's no chance, like we have, then really it's just about there. But you can see how much pace we've got with the DRS. The tie wear, there it comes Gasly out of nowhere, having a go um, as well. But Gasly unable to get past, and now he's going to be vulnerable. You might have wanted to make, make made that dive bomb on Sonoda. Um, but Gasly and um, oh, Sainz going side by side through to turn one. But Gasly on the outside is the better, better racing line. Um, as well, we're going to let Sonoda again in front um, to give me DRS. My tie, rear tyres have really gone now. 10% more than the fronts. Again, it's not quite as bad as uh, Brazil, but it's still quite bad. Um, you know, we've done more laps on these tyres than we did at Brazil. Um, so something there. So Gasly again having a go at Sonoda, got on the inside. Um, but Sonoda is able to carry on. And we, it looks like we're going to get. A podium unless Sonoda can have a good lap run up to the line. We're not going to get DR. We're not going to give him the DRS. We save some DRS through the middle sector for this purpose. You know, been using an advantage using DRS as you can save the DRS as well. But up to the line we come, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is another podium um, as well. Fantastic running there. You know, the red flag definitely gives us a chance for podium. You know, because but. Before that, we went for like P6, um, you know, at best. So we don't know what we would have done. You know, you, you never know what would have happened by doing that soft, uh, medium soft strategy that, you know, I mean, obviously everyone did most grid is soft hard apart from, um, you know, the Red Bulls who, you know, Verstappen was miles in front. And that's going to give Verstappen a 20 point lead. Oh dear. Over Leclerc. You know, Verstappen really has come out of nowhere. He's been, he was terrible in the first part of the season, and now he's he's leading the championship comfortably by 20 points. Constructors for us, seven points, seven points behind McLaren. That is very t interesting. If we can overtake McLaren and get fourth place, um, that would be helpful. But we need Alonso or Fernando to be in the point. He hasn't scored points in the last two races after that fifth place finish at Qatar um, you know so I'm hoping that his career because apparently he's you know we had it's been a long time since we had that retirement message from him um, ages ago um, about him retiring is he I don't actually know if he's actually going to retire um, yes so Las Vegas will be out later this week don't get your hopes up about the episode spoiler alert there um, that episode will be out on Thursday for sure the next episode after that will be the United uh, um, Abu Dhabi that will be out on Monday and then after that I'll obviously need to work on season 3 mods for that I've done a little bit of work but obviously I'm still going through fancy liveries as well and converting those for the sports update so there might be there may or may not be a break i don't know about that um you'll find out with other content later on um if there, if there is no break then there's the pre-season episode will be the week after um for sure um, as well so i'm hoping to get a fancy livery video out next week as well so yeah, that's where I'm going to leave it today's episode. If you have enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe if you're new to the channel. You see plenty more F123 driver criminal videos as I'm going to come out. I'm trying to hit 1,000 subs before the end of the year. We've only got 23 to go. So yeah, um, till the next video then, I'll see you next time. Take care, enjoy your day, and bye. <laughs>